the What To Next podcast helps to build a TBR of future favorite books. In each episode, Lori and Maine interviews authors and book influencers to recommend books they love for you to pick up today. If you're an avid reader, always looking for your next great read, then the show. Hi, Ines. Welcome to What To Next podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Laura. So happy to have you here. And tell us a little bit about yourself. So I write kissing books. I have over 80 romance novels. I haven't counted since I got to 80. It's probably closer to 100 by now. Um, I write steamy paranormal romance as well as steamy contemporary romance under the pen name N.S. Johnson. So talk to us about like what led you to start writing. Were you a romance creator growing up or like, or you stumble upon it, like appears and gone there like, you know what, we need to have more kissing books, you know? <laughs> so my godmother was an avid Harlequin romance reader. If you remember like the the ones that were so yeah. Tough, thin, yeah. Instead of like um in her um in her kitchen, yeah. instead, in for instead of like um cans and canned goods and spaghetti boxes, her shelves in her pantry were lined with Harlequin romances. And then there were even boxes of unpacked r- romances on the floor. And I saw books. And I said, can I read some? And she's like, sure, so we'll go take as many as you want. Now, remember, they were the, the thin Harlequins, so yeah. there wasn't really much detail. <laughs> but they were kissing in those books, and I loved it. So I grabbed handfuls, went through them, put them back, grabbed more handfuls. She was a never-ending um, repository of books. And so I just, that's when I started, when I was 12 years old. Oh my gosh, I was 12 and I was reading through really high. Like my grandmother was a thriller reader. And so she tried like just like legal drama because she's a lawyer. And she's like trying to get me into the read Mary Higgins Clark and John and John Grisham. And I was like, no. So I discovered Sweet Valley High, like um, like stumble upon I stumble upon Babysitter's Club. I'm in Puerto Rico, so like the the options were limited. And so I just I see about high, but what it kept me going was like the dating part, like the love stories, like there are like the drama and stuff like that. I really like it, but it was the love stories. And it took me like, I don't know, 20 years later to discover there's a whole genre that's just love stories. And I was like, my if love doesn't <laughs> have a love story. I you can't you it will not hold my attention. Yeah, like I just need to know like the relationship, like what's gonna happen, like all the fun stuff. So so what it what happened? What made you decide to start writing it? You know? Well, so, uh even though I was reading, I was a voracious reader, and even though I was, it didn't occur to me to write. I loved television, I loved PBS kids, I loved Saturday morning cartoons, I loved after school specials, loved it. And I knew that that's what I was going to do. And that's what I went to school for. I went to school for screenwriting and media production and how to be a producer. And that's what I did for a number of years, but I was always reading. And, you know, at some point, and I know exactly when this point was, it's when Twilight came out. And people were just going on and on about Twilight. And I was like, she's not a trained writer, huh? I'm a trained screenwriter. I bet I could write a book. Mm-hmm. and I wrote a book and it was not the best thing in the world because it was hard because screenwriting and writing prose two completely different skills but it was fun and so I wrote that book and then I wrote another one and then I think I wrote another one and then um a friend of mine um we're like let's publish these you know there's there's this whole new Amazon KDP and people are independently publishing their books let's do it and so we did it and I tell you, that first month, it was December 14th, 14th or 12th, um, 2014. And I put my book up there, put up for 99 cents, because that was the thing where, back then, you could sell the book for 99 cents. And I wasn't looking to get rich. I was just like, oh my gosh, I hope someone reads my book. People started reading my book. I made like $100 that month on this 99 cent book. And I was, I was hooked. I thought it was the best thing in the world. And so I published another, and I published another, and I kept on going. You years later. And you have been doing this almost 10 years later. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, so much has changed in the past 10 years in the publishing world. What have been some of the things that you realized like that changed that you're like, you wish you knew back then and same time, like you're grateful things change it, you know, now. I wish back then I had leaned more into tropes and writing to market. I understood that stuff coming from the television world. Mm-hmm. I really understood what a market was. And I didn't under, I didn't think that it was this, that there was a market 
in um, the book world, but there 1000% is. And my earlier books were kind of genre hopping all over the place and mixing and mashing genres. And now I'm much more focused, which makes me much more <laughs> successful because readers know exactly what they're going to get when they come to one of my books. So I wish I had known that when I was just a baby writer. Mm-hmm. It's really interesting. I think, like, honestly, understanding the market and the market has shifted. Like, it still shifts. Like, it's you shifts. know, I've been doing this for five years, and I can tell you, it shifted dramatically over yeah. the past like three years. Like, pandemic yes. shifted, like t- turned the world upside down for indies, and we're moving. We're moving in a, in a faster paced direction. You know, true. Uh, we we're mo- we are moving at a faster pace. But we're uh, what's also I think what also people should pay attention to is there's evergreen mm-hmm. stories and categories and genres, and then there's trending stories and categories and genres. And there are times when those trends stick around so long that they become evergreen. That doesn't always happen. So sometimes you'll have writers get caught up in a trend. Like for example, um, right now, monster romance is, is, is big, but it's starting to dwindle. So yeah. it doesn't look like it's going to be evergreen. Whereas there was once upon a time, a few years ago, reverse harem was a big trend. Yeah. And that's still around. Reverse yeah. harem still has a rabbit fan base. So that trend is now evergreen. And you can't really predict like what's going to stick around and what's not. But I think that's something that authors should be aware of. That things come and go and then some things come and stick around and stay for a long time. Yeah. Oh, so good to hear. All right. So we got to talk some books now. Like we talk shop, but like, let's talk some books. Let's talk about Grim Prince. What is the Alberta page? For Grim Prince? Yep. So I am fascinated by fairy tales and mythology. So, but I write in a, I mostly write in a paranormal world and I wanted to write a small town contemporary world. So Grim Prince and the Grimm's Valley romances are all fairy tale and mythological retellings that take place in this one town. And there's no, no one thinks that they're a fairy tale creature, but you can totally tell that every single one of them are, but it's happening in our modern world without real magic. All right. So what was the research process? Like where you're growing up, like, like, right, you know, read their grand fairy tales or like watch Disney movies, like, or like look at Greek mythology or like, you know, like, how do you, how do you get that seed of inspiration? So I'm always curious when we talk about like fairy tales and Greek mythology and retellings, because there's, there's different, like coming from different places, you know. I like watching things being reinterpreted. I love yeah. the idea that you, every, a whole bunch of people can have the germ of a story idea and mm-hmm. you're going to come away with five, 10, 20 different stories all based on this simple seed of an idea. And that's what a fairy tale or a myth, a myth mythological tale is to me it's the a story that's been passed down Mm -hmm. orally but people heard it differently and they put their own spin on it so that's what I that's my favorite thing about retellings Mm -hmm. is that you get to put your spin on it like you have a Cinderella character but what if you don't like the stepmom well maybe instead she has a stepfather so it's small things like that that I think can make a really big big impact in the new way to interpret a story Love this. And so paranormal also deals with some world building, you know, rules, magics and stuff like that. And so what was your process of like coming up with your world, like putting it all together? So um, with Grimm's Valley, it's not paranormal, but with with but I do typically write paranormal romance. And what fascinates me the most really about paranormal is not necessarily the magic, not necessarily the supernatural power that mm-hmm. a being might have. I think one of the main facets of paranormal romance is found family especially mm. if it's going to be wolf shifters right they're in a pack or if it's vampires they've known each other for possibly hundreds of years and they still find a reason to connect i'm fascinated by that this idea of having a found family in romance novels I love this. I didn't think of that. And I'm like, now I'm like, oh yeah, it makes total sense. Like it's, that's what it like, it combines. That's the glue that combines the world. It's like the found family, whether it's, it's a family. pack, whether it's like, and like even the va- the loner vampire, there's still like a political system mm-hmm. yep. that takes care of that loner vampire. So yep. like there's, a, there's rules within it that connects that glue together. Mm-hmm. So I love this. All right. So got a chat book recommendation so 
Um, what kind of books do you tend to read? You mentioned romance growing up, but like you're still a romance reader and what kind of romance? So, you know, thousand percent romance. So I typically spend my reading time reading historicals and or paranormal romance. Mm-hmm. The, I, if I write a paranormal romance, then, excuse me, if I write a historical romance, then that's probably a call for help because there's so much research that goes into that. <laughs> I don't think that I will ever write a historical romance. Um, but I love them and and they allow my brain to relax because I know I'm not going to write that. Um, and just, I just love being in a paranormal world. So um, my, but my favorite, my favorite trope is forced proximity. When the yeah. hero and the heroine are forced to be together and they can't get away from each other and they just have to work it out. I, it's like a puzzle that you have to solve. I love that. My, two of my favorite, 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 I will reread these books one night, wake up, go to bed the next night and reread it again. Um, one is Dragonbound by Thea Harrison. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, that that book is just perfection to me. My When someone explained it to me, um, a woman steals, you learn this in the first chapter, so I'm not spoiling you, but a woman steals a penny from a dragon. Based yeah. on a base, she was blackmailed into stealing something from a dragon. She gets into his lair. She steals a penny, and this dragon loses his mind and tracks this woman down until he captures her. Because out of all the riches in his hoard, she stole a penny, and thus begins one of the best love stories I've ever read in my life. It's called Dragon Bound by Thea Harrison, and another of my favorites. Um, is Vampire Romance, uh, Once Burned by Janine Frost. Mm-hmm. It's the first book in the Night Prince series. I get them all confused, but I love yeah. all of her heroes. And there's all of them deal with some kind of a forced proximity in there as well. But my favorite is uh, the Night Prince um, series. And that's another one that I will just read over and over again. There's this ancient vampire who um, can read minds um, and start fire, fire with his hands. Um, and he falls for a woman who um, was, uh, she got electric shock when she was young and now she can harness voltage, but it doesn't affect him. So of course they're going to fall in love with each other because they can touch. Gosh, I love these. And do you have any historical recommendation? Who's your historical, like historical, I would say like, who's your comfort read? And then like any recommendation you're like, you know, like I'll reread this or just like, oh, this is like a good start. So this might start controversy because I believe that the best Claypus hero, the best Lisa Claypus hero is Winterborn. <laughs> I will read marrying Winterborn over and over and over again and then again and then again. That is my bedtime story. If I'm having trouble falling asleep, I will put that on and I might fall asleep around chapter three, right? And yeah. then the next night, if I'm having trouble sleeping again, I will go all the way back to chapter one. <laughs> And then read it again. I adore that story. And I think I adore it so much because the kind of hero that Winterborn is, you know, he had to pull himself up by his bootstraps. And even though he's one of the most richest men in the city, he still doesn't believe that he is deserving of this woman who he basically blackmailed into marrying him. <laughs> but he doesn't believe he's deserving of him. So, oh. Yes, that is. Those are my three favorite books. The only one that I didn't mention, because I have four. So yeah. The only one that I didn't mention is "Bet Me" by Jennifer Cruzy. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, I need to read at least her. once a year. <laughs> uh, start with that one. Okay, at least once a year, I reread that book. Oh my gosh, I she's been mentioned. She's like uh, quite a few times. <laughs> it is. It is in my. It is in my list. I was um, author. Move it to the top. I will. I will bump it up for sure. <laughs> so, Ines, tell us where you can find you online. So, you can find me on my website, inesrights.com. And I'm not very good on the social medias. I'm great. Um, If you sign up for my newsletter and you email me, I love to have a conversation over email. But the, um, social media is not my strength. But I am there on Instagram, at Ines Writes, on Facebook, at Ines, Ines Johnson Author. And every once in a while, I will put my face up on TikTok and be silly. So you can find me over there. I'm also, surprise, Ines Writes. Hey, this is so good. Thank you, Ines, for being on the show. You're welcome. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support the podcast. 
For a list of books mentioned and other book recommendations, please visit whatreadnextblog.com. Thank you so much for listening and happy reading.